Now we're going to have the board members oh. who represent. Well, no. So everyone, I'm going to ask all the board members uh, to step up. Rob, uh, Rob is here. Rob from Comcast. Dai is here. Al from at and Robert from BT. Memish from Turk Telecom. I see Tang coming up. Uh, Rob is coming up. OK. And David from Telefonica. Perfect. So we have uh, anyone from Google. That's the only board member we are missing in representation here. No, no one is here. OK. So. Uh, no. The switch, switch of the beam. Okay. I'll, oh, I'm I'll sorry. Do I'll do that. There you go. Okay. No, it's, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah. if you can give your lapel mic to the board members who are going to be answering, and then we'll have someone so can pass, it on. pass this on as questions. So, if you have questions, please, please raise your hand, and I'll get you a microphone. Anyone with any hard questions? So, this is the, this is the time to ask the questions about why the board came up with the strategic plan. Identify yourself. So the name is Chaim Porat <coughs> with ECI. So before un understanding why they came to that, I just want to understand about the reference designs. Will they be like in TIP and OCP, which means at the end of the day, the result would be a detailed production files for the white box and the full production open source, or just demos and architectures? Gee, I guess I get the microphone. I get to go first. <laughs> Um, definitely not demos. Uh, there was a lot of discussion about this topic just before this meeting. We had the board meeting, the extended discussion on the strategic plan. Uh, the thought of reference platforms is this is this is a way to tr kind of make the transition from proof of concepts and demos towards a um, a deployable architecture. Everyone will grab that and do something different with it and iterate on it and optimize, but that base platform is meant to be sort of the launching point for, for what comes next. Anyone else wants to? Wayne, <laughs> Al? OK. Uh, the next question. So by the way, this question is about the overall strategic plan. Then we are going to go and deep dive into each of those sections as the next part of the workshop. So if there's specific technical questions about what type of reference designs, what are the components we are talking about, some of that you will hear in a lot more detail from the engineers uh, on the community. One more. Uh, yeah, Deepal Mehta from Intel. Uh, so I, the plan uh, is good, but I didn't see any timeline. So from what you know, can you comment on some realistic timeline? Is it two years out, five years out, trials, deployment? Um, what do you see? And maybe what are the... I'll answer for in, or at and for, <laughs> that, that joke's been used. I just stole that joke, actually. Um, so I think a lot of the a lot of the reason we're urgently trying to get this plan together and get it approved and start working towards it is because we expect some real milestones to be hit this year uh, in actual deployments. We think this is a transition year for SDN and NFE. We all have different pieces of it that we're using, uh, but this is a um, this is a very consequential year. I know for Comcast it's a very consequential year. We expect a transition into into field deployments this year. And um, getting this structure in place will help, I think, hap make that happen uh, in a more broad-based fashion than just specifically for what, what we want to do. We all want to be successful here, obviously, uh, since we're all sort of the, part of the same organization. It makes sense to try and do that in a way that the structure suits all of our needs. Anything else I can answer for you? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Wake up. So uh, I'm Wei Changcheng from China Mobile. I would like to ask a question uh, to the uh, operator uh, 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 management uh, guys. Uh, we know uh, the code have been uh, developed by uh, uh, ONF for long time. So and uh, such as AT and T and the uh, China Unicom, they have announced uh, they uh, would like to uh, deploy the code. I would like to know the progress of the deployment. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to answer that on your behalf because we're going to have a whole section this afternoon which talks about every operator coming up and talking about their deployment plans. So. Unless someone wants to take that on right now, let's go for it. But there's a whole section for two and one and a half hours this afternoon, starting at 4.15, about that. We have to wait. 
That's what he's telling you. He's going to make you sit through the whole thing. <laughs> you got it. Hi, this is Siddharth from Flex. Uh, in this supply chain, we can see that there are so many uh, chains like uh, integrator, VNF integrators, then OEMs. So who is expected to provide support in these reference architecture once you go into the deployment stage? Well, that's a great question. I mean, I think that's one of the, as OEMs try and learn the new business model for what we're doing here, we think that's an area where we expect experts on the partner side of our business and other folks here, businesses to help step in, customize, optimize, support, maintain, um, harden, um, help us in the field. I mean, I think that's a role that the expectation out of ONF when it was launched really was to have those partners join in at that level and be a, be a piece of that uh, be a piece of that solution going forward. So I think we see a big role for uh, OEMs in that in that area. Uh, we think it's not the right role necessarily for ONF to be in, uh, but we know there's a lot of folks who do this for a living and have done it well for us for many years, and we expect that they would help us help us going forward. By the way, before I hand off to someone else who wants to say something. All the, all the really good work here on this, on this um, plan was really hard work of Guru and a lot of my friends up here on the panel, especially on the AT&T side, put a lot into this, uh, putting the structure together. We talked about it a lot for months, uh, came to this consensus, but a lot of really long hours put in, put in by these folks, putting this plan together to try and make this organization successful, specifically so we can get into production this year. So. didn't after he gave us accolades. Gosh. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, so we're a modest group. Um, <laughs> so uh, so one of the things on the, uh, on the question of integration, um, so integration, as most folks know, is very difficult, uh, and it's a lot of work. Uh, and I like uh, one of my colleagues said, we, we know how to test things to death, right? So we're going to test them to life now. But anyway, um, the idea of having an operator group, and that is a group of operators come up with common reference designs that then can be published, hopefully for those non-differentiating uh, type of platform elements will make the job of integrating across the group of operators in the operator group simpler, right? All the way down to the point where if you read some of the follow-on material closely, you know, we're open to sharing labs and other things where we're building to ONF reference design and platform specs. So we're actually trying to both streamline and optimize the ecosystem and the type of people that will want to be willing to step up and provide that integration uh, function uh, by simplifying uh, those reference designs. So to your cord question from China Mobile, I'm not going to make you wait for a second because you know, Cord right now has many variants, right? You know this yourself, right? Um, so what we're looking to do over time is to also reduce the variance uh, of Cord so that there's a common platform component uh, to something called Cord because Cord as an idea is still a really good idea, right? Think about it, central office re-architected as a data center. The fundamentals still apply. What we're trying to get to, though, is a point where we can reduce the customization and the variance that create get created from what should be a common platform uh, uh, build. Okay. There was a question. Yeah. Oh. Go ahead. No, just a comment. I think it was said already, but uh, on the OM side, I, I'd like to make a comment for for your question. Um, I'm representing Deutsche Telekom here, so we see at least in Europe that some of the OEMs that showed us slides six months, nine months ago that certain things will never work suddenly change their business and approach us and say, okay, now we could be the one and only integrator for you. So this is good, and we'd love to see more. And uh, we see that you know things are changing to a good way, and I'm pretty sure that we will find rather soon an ecosystem that will be supportive in helping us as operators to get this on the ground. Hi, I just, I'm Carol Wilson from Light Reading. I wondered, <clears throat> it's not clear to me if you see this as a limited set of partner vendors or a, gr a continually growing and expanding set of partner vendors. It seemed like initially you're looking for a smaller set, but I'm just curious as to how you view this going forward when you talk about what that ecosystem is gonna, gonna contain. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Now I'm going. <laughs> no, it, it is. It is indeed a tough question. Yeah, I'd love. I'd rather love to pass on the microphone. But I think the idea is. No, no. The, the idea is, in fact, to to make this an operator-led consortium and to keep the voice of the operators have a main stake in that and not let the uh, ONF be overtaken by vendors. And this is what I've seen, what I've watched over the last 18 months to come and take over an ownership of the boards and slow things down. So this is operator-led and we want to uh, operators drive it. That's why we want to limit the suppliers in a sense to limit also their power and have a say in that. So perhaps that's too straightforward and too hard. I apologize my English. <laughs> no one else wants to take that question, obviously. <laughs> we'll go on. So want to understand the business model. So say a few years ago, right, you had open source projects and the temps hardened it and they got compensated for it. Is the business model that the operators are going to fund the hardening of this open source project and take it from there and collectively each of you don't have to do individual work or you, you expect the supply chain to harden it for free and then uh, you do the last 10% customization. What's yeah, the so the answer is yes and yes and I'm going to tell you why because there was a question on timing earlier. So the the t so uh, what Guru showed was uh, part of a plan and there's a 30 day burn uh, on a TLT getting uh, formulated that begins to put a formalized plan together. But imagine for a, because we didn't want to limit the, the technical leadership team. That's the big thing. The TLT has the authority to execute and the power to reach inside their operator organizations to grab the resources to get work done, right? So, and I can talk about, you know, AT&T grabbing resources for the things that we've already announced and helping facilitate uh, deployment, but it's everybody trying to do something similar, right? So the answer to your question may be yes. The operator group may say, listen, you know what? We can't find this thing that we need today. We're gonna build it ourselves, and we're gonna put it out into open source and try to nur nurture an ecosystem around it. That's an easy one. On, on how do you, you know, find the people that integrate it as part of what happens when you go to an implementation stream, the plan for how those operators would intend to take that to field trial and ultimately production would have to include how that realization would need to incur, occur. So in that case, if there happened to be, you know, uh, in this case, you know, a vendor or an integrator or someone else who has a partnered with us through the inc uh, incubation cycle, they might be a natural way to carry that forward, right? Anybody else? So in addition to that, um, the reason for, for all of us <laughs> to, s to stay here is um, somehow if some integrator or some company do the investment to harden some, some solution, um, we expect this, uh, this contribution to be contributed back to the to the community so that others can benefit as well, right? In the same way we are uh, <coughs> putting resources from the operator point of view to uh, contribute to push forward these type of solutions, we expect the uh, supply chain community to act mm -hmm. the same way yeah. and make the revenues not just by creating some proprietary solutions, but from the actual deployments and integrations on the field. Uh, for for China Unicorn, uh, the idea is uh, simple. We need to do a central office the architecture for the, our network transformation. We need uh, open source and the white box uh, solutions. So the code is an uh, attractive uh, platform for our uh, network transformation. But at this moment, we have already uh, done uh, some uh, uh, library trials. Uh, at this moment, we need to uh, the more uh, supply uh, chain partners to 
uh, provide the more uh, open source components for the uh, production, for commercial deployment. So uh, I, I think the uh, uh, code is just a uh, reference platform. We still uh, need uh, 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 open source components from the uh, different uh, vendors. So uh, we wish uh, more uh, supply chain partners uh, could join us to uh, accelerate uh, production. Any other questions? All right. Oh, there's one more. Tom. Thank you, Matt. Some questions. So this is Tom Tofek. So I, I appreciate, you know, I guess what's happening in terms of reference platforms. I've been waiting for this moment. Thank you so much for that. I want to make a statement and a question from the operators, including, you know, ourselves. Uh, in the past, I have been witnessing people been using core technology. You know, they've been putting sort of a cover on it and don't call it core or putting up products, referencing some of the work that's been happening and all of that. But they've been afraid to declare it as core-based solutions. Uh, going forward with these reference platforms, are operators willing to give brownie points to OEMs and supply chain that if they come up with these solutions based on these open reference platforms, that they get value or they get credit for it and all of that instead of proprietary approach or hidden approach, I guess I would say. Solutions. Okay. Um, brownie points. Uh, so I'll try to answer the brownie points one. I can tell you that every, every there's a lot of software components in the infrastructure. Everyone is a make versus buy versus partner decision. Um, and we have some of each, and we want on the partner side, partners who are willing to go in the same direction we are, and part of those components are certainly going towards an open source model. Uh, we will take components that are important to us out of ONF and look for partners who are on that journey with us to get it over the hump. Uh, we think there's business model there, just like you're asking us about your business model. We have to ask, you'll have to think of that. I mean, you have to make some calls, right? Where are you going to place your bets. Um, there's a valuable bet, we think, to be placed in supporting operators on the open source side. That's what we're trying to get across here. Certainly, being part of um, where we're going is if, is an advantage uh, as an OEM, is if, if you're part of that introduction and part of that getting us um, to production and deployment, that's certainly something I think you'd want to be in on the ground floor, and it is the ground floor. Um, that certainly could pave the way for, for future relationships, of course. I uh, echo my friend's comment here. There was a lot of folks who were skeptical that we could get in this direction, and not too much longer later, we had a lot of folks saying this is the right direction to go. So a lot of evolutions happened in a short period of time, and a lot of uh, minds have been changed in a short period of time on what can happen here, and certainly the folks who get in. Get into, uh, get into the ecosystem early, have good opportunities to be part of that for a long time. All right, I think uh, I'm going to do a time check. We are, I think, out of time for this section. Uh, unless there's a last question, we'll take one more, and then I'll thank the, the board. Oh, Margaret has a question. I sort of hinted at the board meeting this morning. So uh, how do you see this fitting with OCP? this fit with OCP? I could probably say the same thing as how does this fit with OCP? How does this fit with uh, ONAP? How does this fit with Open NFV? How does this fit with whatever, right? So uh, OCP, though, is an easier one because we already have a pretty good experience with the team working the white box OLT through OCP. And we think that's a good model, right? <laughs> Uh, and actually, there, there's a multi-part strategy of, of ONF overall, and one part of that strategy is for it to be more inclusive of other organization building parts of reference designs that are required for the operator solutions. So you'll see some formalized acknowledgement that the uh, reference designs will be modular and components will come from 
either ecosystems or liaisons built with the other open source efforts. Uh, and, you know, plus, you know, you bring up OCP, I love that because, you know, I know we use the word open source a lot, but if you actually look at one of the key values that ONF has provided, it's been way beyond open source. If you take the formalized definition that I generally use, it's about open systems, right? And that's inclusive of hardware and software. So certainly OCP plays a role for us there. And I think the open software will just continue to grow uh, over time and we'll leverage that. Others? Folks, different views. No, good. Are you good, Diane? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes, um, OCP or TIP is the, uh, uh, I think it could be a part of the reference design implementation, and it depends on the use cases very much. For example, uh, we NTT are leading the new project ODTN. This is a project for transport networks. But, and uh, we, uh, we have just starting the, um, the evaluation uh, to integrate the, our systems with the uh, TIP, comp TIP devices or something. Um, yeah, I, I think this is, uh, will be decided by the TLT concrete, but generally, uh, yeah, this is uh, the one component of the, the difference design implementation. Thank you very much. <laughs> Please, thank you, board. Let's, uh, as everyone knows, we are going to have them, each one of the service providers come and talk about their deployment plan specifically again. So there can be more questions. So 